Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. In a suburban house in Philadelphia, two children enter their parents' bedroom and jump on the bed to wake them up. Later, Jerry makes pancakes for his daughters and his wife Karen, tells Rachel their oldest daughter, to get her inhaler. Jerry watches the riots on the news, where a government has declared martial law in their country. Connie, their youngest daughter, asks what that is and if he was in places like that in his previous job. Jerry says yes, but he gave it all up to be with them. Rachel brings Connie's toy, and they head out to school. On the way, they play a game in the car because they are stuck in traffic. Karen wonders about the number of helicopters in the air, and Jerry turns on the radio. The news reports an outbreak of rage that started in Taiwan and spread to other countries. Suddenly, a motorcyclist breaks the car's side mirror and Jerry steps out to face him and sees what is separated. When then an explosion occurs further down the street, and a motorcyclist orders him to get in the car when out of nowhere a truck hits him and drags everything in its path. Jerry starts following the truck, thinking it might be their way out. However, he crashes into another truck and flips over, but Jerry manages to turn in time and avoid a collision. He drives through the city, filled with military personnel and on the verge of a crisis. Jerry turns to tell Rachel to buckle up when an ambulance hits their car. None of them are hurt. Jerry takes Connie out of the car first and then Rachel from the same side. People are chasing scared individuals and attacking them relentlessly. A woman breaks the windshield of a car to reach the people inside. Karen sees her biting a man and becomes terrified. Jerry tells her to run, and as they do, he observes the situation with the woman. The man who was bitten thrashes violently on the road, as if transforming. Jerry puts his family in a trailer while other people infected by something attack anyone they see on the street. One of them almost enters their car, but Jerry drives furiously through the chaotic streets while their vehicle is under attack. They eventually reach a road outside the city, where Rachel has an asthma attack, and Karen tries to calm her down. She checks her backpack for a spare inhaler, and Jerry stops the vehicle to talk to Rachel, guiding her through the crisis. Karen can't find the medication and tries to call the trailer to find a pharmacy, but it doesn't work. Jerry's phone rings, and it's a call from an old colleague, Terry. He tells Jerry that they barely made it out and that he doesn't know what's happening either. Meanwhile, Connie finds a shotgun, and Jerry takes it away from her. Karen manages to get the trailer running, and they leave the area. Thierry tells Jerry that he will try to get a helicopter for them, calling back to indicate an extraction point in an hour. Before hanging up, he tells Jerry that he will need him back at work. They arrive in Newark and head to a store that has already been invaded by people. They split up, with Karen going to get food and Jerry taking Rachel to find the medicine she needs. At the pharmacy, they encounter a guy with a gun who asks them what they need. He finds the medicine for them and hands it to Jerry along with something else that might help. Meanwhile, Connie calls out for him, rolling alone in a cart. They reach her and see Karen being attacked by two men. Jerry goes after her, but the men start shooting. He retaliates and hits one of them. A police officer enters and Jerry raises his hands, but the officer is only there to grab supplies he needs as well. The family leaves the store and sees that the trailer has been taken. Jerry calls Thierry to inform him of their location, but he says he can only secure a helicopter for them at dawn. The family decides to wait on top of an apartment building with flares. They reach the building, and the infected people chase them. Jerry fends them off from outside and then joins the family to barricade the door. As they run up the stairs, the infected break through the door and pursue them. In the chaos of the chase, they lose Connie and search for her through the apartments. They find her in front of an open door with another family inside. Jerry and his family enter and settle in, communicating with the parents through their son, Thomas. Jerry finds an emergency broadcast on the radio. The message says that everyone should stay indoors if possible, because an unidentified virus has spread throughout the state. After a while, Jerry wakes up from a nightmare and hears something outside. He finds Rachel and Thomas in another room, and the boy tells him that she was crying. Later, Jerry talks to his father and says that they have a better chance of survival if they go with him. But his father refuses the offer. Jerry and his family leave the apartment and hear the zombies inside the building, so they run towards the roof, while Thomas's family discusses whether to go with them because the zombies are at their door. 
Jerry and his family hide, fearing being seen. However, when they open the door, the zombies instantly attack. They run through the stairs, and Jerry fights some of them, but with more zombies chasing him. Meanwhile, the helicopter approaches the building but doesn't see them. Jerry fights another zombie while Karen and the girls escape to the roof. Suddenly, Thomas kills the zombie that was about to bite Jerry. Karen ignites the flares, and the helicopter spots them. Jerry goes to the roof with Thomas but moves away from them to see if he will turn. It takes a moment, but he hears the zombies at the door and runs to hold it. When the helicopter lands, Karen and the children get in. A soldier covers Jerry's back so he can reach the helicopter. They keep shooting at the zombies, who throw themselves behind the helicopter and fall from the building. Moments later, the helicopter lands on a UN ship in the Atlantic Ocean. Terry welcomes them upon arrival and takes them to where they will stay and rest. While taking Jerry to the command center, he informs him that all major cities around the world have been affected by the virus. Inside the command room, a group of experts is discussing the virus. Dr. Fassback believes that once they discover the origin of the virus, they can create a vaccine. Terry calls Fassback their best option to find out what the virus is and tells Jerry that the word zombie was first used in a memorandum from South Korea. They plan to send the doctor there to search for the origin. Suddenly, a general enters the command center and goes straight to Jerry. He tells him that as he was Terry's best investigator, he wants to send him to South Korea with a team and Fassback. Jerry refuses because he can't leave his family, and unable to convince him, the general threatens him. If he doesn't work for them, they will kick his family off the ship. Jerry talks to Karen and tells her the situation. He gives her a cell phone and asks her to call him once a day. Jerry promises that he will return and says goodbye to the girls and Thomas. Jerry's plane takes off. He tells Fastback that he needs to follow the soldier's orders. Jerry also asks him to draw attention to anything he deems important so they can make it happen. Fastback believes they will find something there and says that sometimes what may seem like the most brutal aspect of the virus ends up being its flaw. Meanwhile, the ship is relocating all non-essential personnel off the deck. Jerry's plane and the others finally land in South Korea, even though no one responds from the base to confirm if they can. The hatch opens, and the team starts to exit when they hear something outside. They slowly move out as the zombies begin to attack. Fazbak gets scared and runs back to the plane, but the poor guy slips and falls on the gun, accidentally shooting himself and dies. The soldiers fight against the zombies and head towards the base without Fazbak. Once inside, they are greeted by the base soldiers who ask why they are there. Jerry talks about Fazbak, and then the pilot asks about refueling. Captain Speak explains that when the time comes, they have to be very careful because the zombies are attracted to noise. He tells them that shots to the head are what solves it, but they also burn the bodies when they can. He asks Jerry what he will do now that Fastback is dead. Jerry explains about the memorandum with the word zombie, and they take him to a waiting room with burnt bodies. There, they explain that all those were soldiers who tried to stop their doctor, but he bit them all. The only thing they know about how he contracted the virus is that a soldier who had disappeared a week earlier had bitten him. When the doctor returned, he bit up to 15 men. Unfortunately, the documents that Jerry could use to trace the soldier who bit the doctor were also destroyed in the fire. Speak tells him that one of his men was not attacked by the zombies, even though he was in the middle of them. At that moment, Jerry sees a former CIA agent in the waiting room and talks to him. He was selling weapons to North Korea but tells Jerry that the weapons are only partial measures. The ex-agent pulls out his last remaining tooth and tells him that they pulled out the teeth of the entire population within 24 hours to contain the spread. Jerry calls it a lie, and then the man tells him that Israel is the only country winning the war by building a wall around Jerusalem, and tells Jerry who he should find there. Later, Jerry tells the pilot that they are going to Jerusalem. The soldiers prepare Jerry and his team to board the plane. Speak has a complete strategy on how to handle the refueling of the aircraft. Jerry and his team ride bicycles to the plane, and the soldiers surround the base with snipers to cover their backs. Speak tells them through the radio that they have to be quiet and reach the plane before he can bring the fuel. However, as they proceed, Karen calls Jerry, and the phone ringing alerts the zombies. The men continue with infected ones chasing them, and Speak knocks down a group of them with the fuel truck. Refueling begins as Jerry and his team fight zombies in front of the plane. 
An infected attacks Jerry, and Speak saves him but gets bitten in the process. As Jerry is boarding, Speak tells his men that he will end himself before he can turn. Jerry sadly watches him do it from the plane. A member of his team goes out to disconnect the fuel hose while Jerry enters the cockpit, locking the door behind him so the zombies cannot get in. As they take off, they fall from the back of the plane. Jerry calls Karen and tells her that they are going to Israel. She tells him that the children are okay when suddenly there is a nuclear explosion several kilometers away from the plane, and the call drops. The plane approaches Jerusalem, and they request permission for an immediate landing and for a United Nations envoy to speak with them. Jerry tells the pilot to stay with the plane and that he will be back before nightfall. Then he is taken in a convoy to meet the agent. Jürgen Warmbrunn tells him that it is human nature not to believe that something can happen until it has already happened. Jerry asks him how Israel found out, and Warmbrunn tells him that they intercepted communication from an Indian general mentioning fighting zombies. Jerry doesn't believe that was what convinced the seasoned agent. Warmbrunn explains that in the 70s they devised a strategy where the tenth man must disagree with the other nine who reached the same conclusion. The tenth man has to start digging with the assumption that the other nine are wrong. Since everyone else assumed that the zombies were just a cover for something else, being the tenth, he had to work under the assumption that it was true. Warmbrun tells him that there are many possible origins at play, but no one knows where the virus originated. They finally reach the large wall, which allows people to enter the city. There, numerous zombies gather around the wall, while inside, people begin to celebrate their potential salvation. As the singing gets louder, it starts to attract the zombies to the wall, and they begin to climb it by piling up on top of each other. Jerry asks Warmbrun what he should look for in India, but the agent tells him that all he can look for is a way to hide. The horde of zombies climbs the wall as the celebration continues, but the authorities realize that something is happening. Zombies start falling from the wall and entering Jerusalem. Jerry tries to escape with Warmbrun as the zombies begin to attack everyone inside the wall. Helicopters attack them from the outside, but it barely makes a difference. Warmbrun tells Jerry that his soldiers will take him to his plane. The zombies advance deeper into the city, and the Israeli army can't do much about it. Jerry runs with a constantly pursued crowd of zombies until a soldier activates a grenade. Meanwhile, Jerry's plane pilot is informed that the city has been invaded and that the zombies are heading to the airport. A horde of zombies frantically follows Jerry and the officers. He looks out the window where a horde wreaks havoc when he sees the unlikely, a child being completely ignored by the infected. The officers continue to fight the zombies while Jerry hides. They activate more grenades, and Officer Segan kills the last zombie nearby. However, she gets bitten in the process, and when Jerry sees the mark, he quickly cuts her hand, and the virus fails to spread. Segan loses a hand but doesn't turn into a monster. The last survivors run towards the helicopter that arrived for them, but it is attacked by a group of zombies and crashes. Jerry's plane pilot requests immediate departure as Jerry approaches the airport, but he only sees his plane already in the air. They quickly prevent another plane from taking off. In this one, only Jerry and Segan enter through the cockpit. The pilots don't know where to go and are looking at a map when a horde of zombies surrounds the plane, but luckily, it takes off in time. Once in the air, Jerry looks down at the city and watches as it is devastated by the zombies that entered. He finds alcohol and gives it to Segan, then changes her bandage. Finally, he wraps her arm and says he didn't know if cutting it off would work. Suddenly, Jerry remembers the story about one of Captain Speak's men and recalls other people who were not attacked by the zombies. He realizes what they must do and calls Karen, telling her to find Thierry. Jerry tells him that he needs to locate a nearby research facility. Terry needs to know where he is, and Jerry knocks on the cockpit door. He hands his phone to the pilot, and after a conversation with Terry, the pilot tells him they will head to Cardiff, where there is a possibility of reaching a WHO research facility. Jerry hears a dog barking in the background. When the flight attendant calls the elevator, the dog escapes. She opens it, and a zombie attacks her. Jerry realizes something is happening when the flight attendant attacks people and creates more zombies. He sees what is going on and asks the passengers to stay quiet. They work together to block the door with anything they can find. One of the passengers drops a bag and alerts the zombies. They invade the plane and wreak havoc. Jerry fights the zombies and is nearly bitten when Segan shoots the zombie behind him. 
she keeps shooting, and Jerry finds a grenade on her belt that he throws to the back of the plane. It explodes, tearing the plane apart, and the pilots have to make an emergency landing. Jerry straps Segan and himself with seatbelts. One remaining zombie attacks them as the pilots prepare for impact. The plane breaks apart upon impact. Later, Jerry wakes up, trapped in his seat, and sees that Segan is not in hers. He is severely injured from shrapnel. Jerry frees himself from the seat. Suddenly, Segan appears. They find their way to the WHO facility. Meanwhile, the general on the UN ship is informed that the Cardiff airport lost contact with Jerry's plane. Karen is being called to speak with Thierry. He talks to his commander, who tells him to kick Karen and the children off the ship. At the facility, Jerry is experiencing hallucinations and nightmares. He wakes up and sees his wound bandaged, then notices someone sitting next to him. As soon as Jerry wakes up, the man consults someone in another room. They come back and ask who he is. They show him the phone, so he tells them to call it and find out who he is. Thierry is surprised to see that Jerry is alive and introduces himself to the men. Before they can respond, Jerry asks about Karen, and Thierry tells him what happened. Later, Jerry is released, and they bring Segan to see him. They say his family was sent to a refugee camp, but Jerry knows they won't be safe there. The lead doctor from who asks what he needs from them and takes him to his team. Jerry asks for their deadliest virus, with a high mortality rate, because he wants to use it against the zombies. They tell him that the undead cannot get sick, but Jerry explains that it's not for them, but for the humans. He thinks that the weakness of the zombies is their inability to infect a sick host. Jerry has the idea that the people he saw being avoided by the zombies had a terminal illness that the zombies could detect, so they didn't attack them. Using the lethal pathogen wouldn't be a cure, but a disguise. One of the doctors understands his reasoning and explains that the only way to prove it would be to encounter a zombie face to face. She says they have all the viruses, but they are all stored in Wing B, which is infested with around 80 zombies. Another doctor tells him that the zombies in Wing B are dormant at the moment. He shows Jerry how to get there. Then, Jerry, Segan, and the lead doctor prepare to go to the wing with the vaults and retrieve the virus. Jerry and Segan also grab weapons, although the doctors tell them not to kill any zombies as it makes the remaining ones more aggressive. The three enter the corridor. The lead doctor instructs her subordinates to seal the doors permanently if anything besides them passes through the corridor. The doctors monitor them safely from the other wing. Jerry enters first, and the light turns on as they slowly walk through the facility. They continue making noise and slightly wake up some of the zombies. When they reach a laboratory with glass doors, Segan moves to the other side first, then the doctor, and finally Jerry, without alerting the zombies. They continue to the vaults, but make noise with a swinging door, awakening the zombies. They pass through and reach the vaults. There is a zombie down there as well, who hears them. Segan shoots it, causing all the zombies to run toward them. Jerry distracts the zombies so the others can reach the vault. Most of them get trapped behind a door. Only one follows Jerry. He neutralizes it without much difficulty. Suddenly, another one appears, and Jerry eliminates it as well. Segan and the doctor reach the vaults, but encounter more zombies. They run and are followed out. The other doctors open the doors for them, even though they are pursued by a group of zombies. They barely manage to hold the door, but eventually close it. Fleeing, Jerry manages to reach the vault where the viruses are stored. He enters and tries to open the door when the phone rings. The doctor tells him the password, and Jerry enters. He grabs all the viruses that fit into a box. Suddenly, a zombie appears at the door, and Jerry has no choice but to inject himself with one of the viruses. He leaves a message for his family, prepares one of the viruses, and injects it into his arm. Jerry waits for the virus to take effect while the zombie is still outside the vault. After a while, he decides to open the door. The zombie enters but doesn't attack him. His idea worked. Jerry drinks a can of soda and triggers the soda machine's mechanism to distract the zombies and make them move in the opposite direction. He walks back to the main facility without the zombies causing him any trouble. The doctors give him a vaccine, and he leaves the facility with Segan. Jerry goes to search for his family in the refugee camp, they are all there waiting for him. Meanwhile, his idea spreads worldwide.
The WHO develops a vaccine that works as camouflage, helping people become invisible to the zombies. This gives humanity a chance to fight back. Humans have also devised strategies to annihilate entire hordes of zombies with fire or bombs. The survivors gather and prepare for a war that is just beginning.